Tonight, we learn more about Troy's celebration of International Education Week. Plus, find out how internships can help students. Stay tuned. Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News starts now. The High Definition Digital Production Center on the Troy campus with news from Troy University locations around the world. This is Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News. Hello, welcome to Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News for November 18, 2013. I'm Jamarlo Phillips. And I'm Courtney Addison. Thank you for joining us this evening. This is the International Education Week for Troy University, a time for the school to focus on internationalization. There are a number of events and activities planned throughout the week to showcase Troy's international student body. Today started the International Week Photo Contest. The photos are in the contest are displayed in the Trojan Center lobby. The photos will be judged and the winning pictures will be displayed during the International Week Taste of the World event on Wednesday. Troy's Dean of International Student Services says this week gives, gives students a chance to learn more about other cultures as well as gain more experience to further their education outside the U.S. It will be for students and other staff and faculty to learn more about what the international uh, initiatives are at the university. Um, we bring people together. Study abroad is focused um, on Wednesday also. So some of the domestic students can learn more about opportunities to go abroad. The next International Week event will be a lecture on the elections in the country of Georgia tomorrow at 2.30 in the Math and Science Complex, room 337. And Troy's international students have a big party plan to cap off the week of international themed events. Troy's International Student Cultural Organization, or ISCO, will hold their annual ISCO Festival Thursday night in the Trojan Center Ballrooms. The event features food and entertainment from the nations represented by Troy's international student population. Tickets for the festival are available now for $15 and can be purchased in the International Office in Pace Hall. The ISCO Festival will be this Thursday starting at 6 p.m. in the Trojan Center Ballrooms. Well, Courtney, internships provide college students with opportunity to uh, get experience with the real world and for employers, um, for employers and teachers getting cl class cr credit, excuse me. You know, and that's exactly right, Jamarlo. And internships are also a good way to get a taste of the professional world while you're still in school. However, as Megan Green shows us, there is one Troy student who is taking plenty advantage of her internship opportunities. Jessica Jackson, a senior marketing major at Troy University, is in the middle of her sixth internship while at Troy. Jackson feels the internships can give her as much experience as possible in her chosen field. I've interned at a company formerly known as College Prowler, um, Walt Disney World Resort in Orlando, Florida, um, Access Magazine. Currently, I'm an intern for a sports marketing company uh, geared towards women, and it's called Jersey Girl Sports. Jackson has already completed five internships. She says not only is it important to earn your degree, but also having more than enough experience. Pursue more than one internship. There's no, you should always be a student and always be seeking knowledge. And having an internship, that's a way to seek knowledge. With the marketing and public relations skills that Jackson has gained from each internship, she says it encouraged her to develop her own personal blog. Currently, I have a blog and it's called Money Can Buy Style or Sense. What I cover is being styled on a budget, um, different healthy recipes that I try to incorporate every day. I also may share different exercises that I've tried that have worked for me. Jackson's friend, Monica Wright, says the amount of internships Jackson has completed has too inspired her. It inspired me a great deal. Um, I'm a second generation college student from my family and I think it's very important for you to just go out there and try to find something, not just having a degree. However, if you'd like to seek an internship but unable to relocate, Jackson shares some advice. Seek out virtual internships because the way media is changing, Virtual internships, they benefit not only the employer, but the student. This is Megan Green, Troy Trojan Vision News. If any students have any questions about internship opportunities, they can visit the Office of Career Services in Eldridge Hall. 
And now taking a look at news from around the state and Selma authorities say they've charged two men with capital murder in connection with the deaths of two Selma residents. The two charged are 28 year old Beandridge Bradley III and 29 year old Eddie James Irvin III. The bodies of a man and a woman were found after 11 o'clock yesterday morning at the Candlewood Apartments. And in Aliceville, a railroad company says it has reopened a West Alabama line following the derailment 10 days ago of a train carrying crude oil. The Connecticut-based Genesee in Wyoming says the first train to pass the site near Aliceville since the accident got through last night. And in Opelika, the Wolf's and in Opelika, um, will soon, Opelika will soon to be a distillery that will produce an Alabama style whiskey and other drinks. The John Emerald St Distilling Company is set to open early next year across the street from Opelika's downtown event center. And still to come on Trojan Vision Nightly News, the Trojan volleyball team clinched a spot in the conference tournament over the weekend. Danielle Percival will have the details and more when she joins us with sports. But now Danielle Percival joins us with sports. So, Danielle, this weekend a lot of students are going to be headed home for the Thanksgiving holidays, but there's actually going to be a lot of people headed into Troy for a pretty big event from what I hear. Well, that's right, Courtney. It's going to be the Sunbelt Conference Volleyball Tournament, which begins on Thursday, but this past weekend was actually a big one for the Trojan Volleyball Team. We'll get into that and more here in sports. The volleyball team was able to secure their spot in the Sunbelt Conference Tournament with a win over Georgia State on Friday night, but they were unable to win their final match of the regular season on Sunday. The Trojans were swept by the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. That makes the Trojans 0-21 all-time against the Hilltoppers, including being swept twice this season. The Trojans have won three of their last four, however, improving their record to 12-20 overall and 7-11 in Sunbelt competition. But the Trojans get another shot at the Hilltoppers in just a few days. Western Kentucky finished as the regular season champions and will be the one seed in the tournament. The Trojans will have a rematch with WKU in the semifinals of the conference tournament Thursday night. Troy University is the site of the Sunbelt Conference Volleyball Championships and ticket information is available online at TroyTrojans.com. The tournament will run Thursday through Saturday. The Trojans and the Hilltoppers will face off at 7.30 Thursday night. The Trojan football team was looking to make bowl eligibility on Saturday but the Ole Miss Rebels proved to be too hotty toddy. The Trojan football team gave up record setting numbers on Saturday in a 51 21 loss at Ole Miss. The Rebels racked up 751 yards of total offense, setting a school record, and that is the most yards the Trojans have allowed since joining Division I. They, they can really run on offense. I, I'm sure that was noticeable to, to, to any, any uh, fan that they, they can really run. We got a few guys that can run like that, but they got a lot of them. The Rebels established a balanced attack on offense, but the main threat was quarterback Bo Wallace. He finished 17 of 26 for 272 yards and three touchdowns, while also leading the team in rushing with 66 yards and a score. For the Trojans, however, it was a completely different story. The Ole Miss defense held Troy to only 313 total yards and minus 13 on the ground. Yeah, I knew they were going to be good on defense. They played very aggressively, got, got uh, terrific quickness and can cover, and uh, they gave us some problems. The leading receiver on the team was Chandler Worthy with seven receptions for 133 yards, including a 64-yard reception to set up the first touchdown of the game for Troy. I mean, I saw that the guy was trying to, the coach set it up all week, and I knew I was going to be able to outrun him, and, not a let back healthy. I'm able to make that play every time. The Trojans are now five and six with one last chance to reach bowl eligibility, but the season finale is still two weeks away. The team has a bye week and therefore two weeks to prepare for Texas State. We'll have a good week. We'll practice three days next week and, and then we'll start our so-called Monday on Saturday morning and, and give them Sunday off and then go into the three day prep, getting ready for uh, the day after Thanksgiving against Texas State. The Trojans have a bye week this weekend, but have one final chance to reach the six-win mark. The Trojans will play host to Texas State on the Friday after Thanksgiving on what will be Senior Day. Kickoff on November 29th will be at 1 o'clock. Two Trojan women's cross-country members represented the Trojans at the NCAA Division I South Regional on Friday and ended the year on a strong note. 
Julia Ostendorf ran a season best 6K time at 21 minutes, 59 seconds, with teammate Michaela Hodges coming in not far behind her, finishing in 22 minutes and 54 seconds. This race completed the Trojan cross country team season, and now the teams will begin preparing for the indoor and outdoor track seasons in the spring. The Trojan men's basketball team will be back on the court tomorrow night in Trojan Arena taking on Nickel State. The team will be looking to even their record at 2-2 two two after an 81-69 loss on the road to UAB last week. The team is 0-2 on the road so far this year but currently undefeated in Trojan Arena after a big win against LaRange College. After playing three games in six days, the Trojans had some needed time off to prepare for Tuesday night's game. Tip-off at Trojan Arena will be at 7 o'clock tomorrow night. And while the men are in action at home, the women will be on the road in Macon, Georgia, taking on the Mercer Bears. These two teams met last season in Trojan Arena, and Troy fell just short in a 96-90 defeat. The team was in a 22-point hole in the second half, but fought back with a late run. But it was a late run that cost the team on Friday, as Tennessee State went on a 19-3 run to win by six. Despite a tough loss on Friday, head coach Shanda Rigby knows her team is capable of bouncing back. Good basketball team. They're a lot bigger than us. They're a lot more physical than us. We have our work cut out for us, but um, I told them all along I can't see losing two games in a row this year. There's, there's no need for it. So we dug ourselves in a hole tonight. We need to make sure we get a win on the road on Tuesday. The Trojans have the chance to get back in the win column tomorrow night against Mercer with tip off at 6 p.m. Mr. Marlowe, Chris. Courtney, while the women's basketball team will be on the road, men will be at home, so hopefully there will be lots of Trojan fans out there in support, you know, getting ready to head into this Thanksgiving break, you know, maybe have some time to, to relax and get out there and enjoy some Trojan athletics with, um, with basketball tomorrow night. Exactly. Hope everybody can you know, take a study break, kind of chill out and get out and uh, go support the Trojans, and best of luck to everyone playing this week. All right. Thanks, Danielle. Thanks,